When we have trouble accessing that motion, oftentimes what will happen is we'll just cave that entire foot in as a unit as a substitution for that motion. Hey guys, Greg Chaplin here, physical therapist and strength and conditioning specialist. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what to do about flat feet. We're gonna talk about what's really going on here at the foot, and then we'll go through common exercises that you can use to address this position. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is the position of a flat foot? So when we see a flat foot, we'll usually see a foot that starts to orient in as a unit like this. So you can either think of this as the foot coming out and then the inside of the foot dropping down, or you can think of this as the whole foot orienting in. But what's happening in both cases is that we're getting this inner edge of the foot closer to the ground and we're losing that structured arch by moving that entire foot as a unit. This is different than having relative movement within the foot that would be associated with the pronated position during walking. So just to review, when we're walking, we have two phases where we're gonna have a more structured arched foot, which are going to be the early phase of gait where we have this tibia behind the foot, and then the very late part of gait when we start to push off, when we're also going to have that arch and the tibia behind the foot. Now in that middle stance phase of gait, the tibia is gonna come over the foot and the arch should drop down. When we have trouble accessing that motion, oftentimes what will happen is we'll just cave that entire foot in as a unit, as a substitution for that motion. So in order to correct this, what we need to do is first restore the position of the foot back to neutral, get a little bit more of an arched position in the foot, get a little bit more muscle activation on this inner part of the foot and up through this inner part of the lower leg. Then we have to learn how to transition this shin over the foot and get those relative movements happening within the foot so that our pronation isn't just a movement of the whole foot in as a unit, but instead is a relative positional change within the foot itself. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to like it. Leave me any questions down below in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. This all helps the algorithm to help me help more people. So really the easiest place to start here is something with heel elevation. And if you need some wedges, you can go down into the description below and there's an affiliate link there where you can get these exact wedges that I'm using in this video. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna move that shin behind the foot. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to get that arch on the foot. So once we're in this position, what we wanna think about is slightly shifting out so we have more weight in the outside part of the foot. We're gonna be paying attention to the contacts in that outer heel, the outer edge of the foot all the way down to the base of the pinky toe. Then we wanna to try to get that base of the big toe down as well so that we have a foot tripod. And this is gonna give us that feeling of a structured foot with a little bit of an arch. Now, once we have that arched position, and we have that foot tripod, we can practice going down into a squat, which is gonna help that shin move over the foot and it's gonna help restore those normal pronation type mechanics we were talking about. So we have outside of the foot, and then that base of the big toe down, we have more of a structure there. Then we're gonna squat down, allowing the shin to move over the foot, which is gonna help us transition from outer to inner edge of that foot and restore those true pronation mechanics. Now, realistically, some people are gonna have so much lengthening on the muscles on the inside part of the foot and the inside part of the lower leg that you're gonna to have to do some exercise to actually engage this area before you'll be able to successfully perform an activity like that heels elevated goblet squat. So a way that we can actually work this area while still keeping the center of gravity behind the foot and simulating that early phase of gait is by doing something like a calf raise with our back supported. So what we do in this case is we put our back against a wall. We could even use a foam roller behind the back if we need to, to make it a little bit easier to come up. To do this activity, we'd wanna exhale up, make sure that we have contact in the entire toe box from outer part of the foot, base of the pinky toe, all the way to that base of the big toe as well. And we should feel that muscle contraction on the inner part of the foot and the inner part of the lower leg. At that top position, we're gonna see that that heel swivels in a little bit. So this inner heel actually comes up as we're reaching that top position. As we come back down, it's gonna swivel out a little bit. And then that's going to alternate as we go up and down. Now, once you've got the hang of that in that position where we're more in that early stance phase, we can then work on that late stance phase 
where the center of gravity is going to be more over or slightly in front of the foot. To do this, we're probably gonna have to hold on to something for balance. And then what we wanna do is we wanna to try to lift those heels as high as possible while swiveling that inner heel in and up to really engage those inner muscles of the foot and lower leg. So we'd hold on to something, we'd boost up as high as we can by lifting that inner heel up. You'd feel that engagement on that inner part of the foot and lower leg. We're gonna have contact through the entire toe box from the base of the pinky toe to the base of the big toe, and then we'll lower down slowly. We'll come up as we exhale, and lower as we inhale. Exhale up, inhale down. Now, if you've got a discrepancy between both sides, which is pretty common, you can progress to something that loads one side more than the other. And the way that I'd recommend doing that is by using both feet to come up and then leveraging the fact that you're gonna be a little bit stronger in the eccentric portion to then work on loading that muscle as you control yourself back down to the ground. So again, you'd probably wanna hold on to something here. You're gonna boost up as high as you can. Then you're gonna shift your weight over onto one foot. Make sure you have the contacts in the toe box like we've talked about. You're gonna lift that other leg and then slowly lower yourself down. Now, again, as you're boosting up here, you're doing it on an exhale, and you're thinking about really lifting that inner heel and swiveling it up as much as you can, loading through that side, lifting the other leg, and then inhaling as you lower yourself down. Now, once you have all these skills, a great way to put it together is something like a heels elevated split squat. So in this position, the shin's gonna be biased behind the foot. It's gonna be easier to get that foot tripod and to get that foot to swivel back in and that inner part of the foot and inner part of the lower leg to engage. And then from here, we're gonna go down on an inhale, allowing that shin to translate forward over the foot. We're gonna get slight internal rotation of the tibia, which is gonna produce those relative movements within the foot to give us that pronation that we need. And then we'll exhale as we come back up and reassume that starting position. So inhale down. Exhale up, and we'll feel a transition here from outer part of the foot plus the base of the big toe, more of a structured foot, and then we're gonna control the rate at which that arch drops as we're going down to the bottom position. Inhale down, exhale up. Now, ultimately, once you get the hang of this, a great way to progress would be by doing some athletic, even plyometric type movements where you're getting into all those phases of early, middle, and late propulsion as you're managing the different positions of the foot. Anything that's going to stimulate that inner calf to produce a more concentric position is going to help to reorient that foot into a more neutral position. And then from there, you can practice translating that shin over the foot to restore those true pronation mechanics. Now, in terms of how many you should be doing, that's gonna be different between individuals, but generally speaking, starting with a few sets of 10 to 15 reps, then increasing load over time until you feel that it's easier to maintain that more neutral foot position, that'll be a good way to start to progress. And then after you feel comfortable with that, get into more of those athletic movements and start to challenge the ability to control these positions in a more dynamic context. All right, guys, so that does it for this video. Hopefully you got some value out of this. If you did like this video, leave me any questions you have down below in the comments. Until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Peace.